Thank you for tuning in to Androna Talks Radio. Gathering as one in our sovereign truth from a galactic perspective. Exploring our world with new ideas, knowledge and a promise of a better future. Galactic discussions for collective minded people. And Drona Talks. Hello, everyone. Greetings. Uh, happy Easter. I'm wishing the best for you and your families, and your friends, and those around you. Even though things are challenging, I want you to enjoy this time today and to set aside a time for uh, meditation and positive outcomes for our future. Remember, we always hold on to the highest intention for humanity. So I created a video a while back with um, a person by the name of James and he had many questions regarding Andronicus and then sometimes he would talk about uh, Yeshua or Jesus and he wanted to have that un understanding because of his deep connection and uh, feelings towards the information and the content um, not just you know with the Andronicus transmissions but also you know his um, long experience with uh, Christianity and um, people have their own different belief systems and what they embrace and and so um, as I've said before we embrace all belief systems because you know we are a universal world and people are here representing different um, experiences and lineage and uh, genealogies and and uh, clan history and so forth and so you know that's I, who am I to judge who is anyone to judge but I think that um, today is specific. Um, I know we talk about um, uh, Ish Ishtar being connected to Easter, but we also can, I mean, I don't have any problem acknowledging Jesus and Passover and so forth. So um, during this uh, discussion that I had with James, we do ask some questions or at least James asked me and then I get the information and share with him. And I thought that today would be the perfect time to share it. So, um, as I said, there's nothing set in stone. Um, this is another perspective of information. And I want you to, you know, just listen through. And if you have any uh, questions or challenges with your faith or your belief system, this is a good way to look at things is being kind of the observer, stepping back and considering all that's being said. And that goes for anything that one believes in. So I just wanted to encourage you. I know that things have been challenging. I haven't been doing a lot of shows, but I do miss you. You're very close to my heart. And um, and I understand that uh, we're all in this together. Every single one of you has a, an important role, even though you may or may not acknowledge it, but your intentions, your meditations and your thoughts are very important. So um, maybe listen through this, do a meditation, holding on to the highest intention for humanity. Have a good day. Okay, so what I was going to ask you is, I was trying to figure out what happened. So you are communicating with Yeshua, and you see him under attack from this being, and is that how it kind of like, shifted its focus from him onto you? Yes. Wow. That's a jerk move. But I think that you're kind of in his space, in, like you, the whatever portal or, or, you know, entanglement that you have with Yeshua. I think that that entity then on occasion attacks you. Great. Or has something locked onto you that causes you? It it sounds like it's similar type of back pain that I got is what you had. Yeah, sometimes I get it. It's funny too because you said left side. It's 
same thing, left side through my left hip. Every once in a while, I get it shooting down the outside of my leg and into my pinky toe. Yep. Really? Goes all the way down your leg, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That is, yes, I have felt that before. It's very unpleasant, to say the least. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah, I was like, geez, I talked, I talked to you, and and it just like, I was, you know, going for a walk. Everything was fine. I was planning on visiting some friends the next day, and I woke up and I literally could not wake up the next morning and walk without excruciating pain. I just, I don't know. What did you do to provoke him, though? Just being there? Just being there. Because they, they recognize who, who we are, you know. They recognize souls. So I could have been in like 10, 20 other bodies since the last time he saw me. And then, then that's it. He's like, oh, you're going to do something here in this space. And I've been in control of it for hundreds of years. And so I'm going to make you feel the pain so you don't do anything. You don't come back here. I see. You think he's trying to keep you out of that space? Oh, yeah. Too late. It's because uh, it opened up. And um, I hadn't seen Yeshua since uh, I think the last time we had talked. And then today I was working with somebody. And he showed up, and I was like, oh, uh, he's right there. And then, you know, it's almost like I couldn't talk to you. I, I, was, I was planning on contacting you multiple times, and then I couldn't talk to you. Um, and then all of a sudden today it happened. And now, now look, we were able to talk. Like, not, not that anyone was, like, forbidding me to talk with you. It's just that things were happening, you know, like... Or I just wasn't feeling right. Because, like, I would literally sit in my seat and, you know, technically I'd be interacting with people. It was so uncomfortable. Like, I'm, I was moving and adjusting. And I was just, like, I couldn't really take too many clients, you know, at least. Or, like, maybe I'd take a phone call and then, you know, I'd move around a little bit so it wasn't so. So I, I just, like, I couldn't, you know, I felt like I wasn't quite right yet. And now I, I feel much better. Did it? Uh, obviously, it affected you physically. Did it affect you spiritually? No. Okay. Still no, because like the same old self. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not. Um, I don't have any guilt of anything that I did, or it wasn't anything. Like, there's no conflict between me and Yeshua. But, the, you know, obviously this other entity, de devil, Satan, whatever you want to call it, um, clearly didn't want me messing up his, his little arrangement that he had there. And I feel like I've seen him a couple times. Like, you, okay, so you have some kind of recognition of him. Yeah, he has uh, reddish skin kind of, of at times and I mean he's just he's I, I mean people you know they see him as the all end all of of the evil but he's he's another species of some sort you know yeah and he's like you know got angular features and and um aggressive very very aggressive does he have horns or hoofed feet? Sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes his skin is, is white. Sometimes his skin is black. You know, like like pure black. Um, some, you know, sometimes he moves like humans. And sometimes he looks for usually very muscular. Interesting. Was he under attack? Like, was Yeshua, like, actually under attack from this thing? And then he kind of stepped in and thwarted that or interrupted the fight? I think he, you know, kind of was hanging around him and making his experience here very difficult. 
Oh, I see. I think as long as he's here, he, he likes to challenge him. It's almost because of maybe uh, Yeshua has a an interest to help people. And so, I mean, the real one, this, the fake ones, I think, is working with him. Yeah. There was, um, actually, some of the stuff that I learned last time made me really think. Whenever I said that stuff about that Templar, uh, that made me wonder, like, that sounds like something that all these programs would go and look for and target like those people like in the past to use the programs. It just, I don't know, it just Ex made me think of that. Explain, what do you mean? Well, like, Templars were known for being like kind of crazy, secretive, and oh, yeah. Yeah. spiritual, but, you know, kind of highly secretive about it, so like it would be like another one of those kind of psychic is that they would target and be like, oh, I bet those would make this thing, maybe. That yeah, I'm sure he, he targeted the Templars, because the Templars are pretty tormented. They had a hard time. And and also the, uh, I mean, you look at any religious group that's trying to get away from maybe uh, like the political church, the churches mm -hmm. that are run by, by the beast system or, or ones that, you know, have other agendas you know, to oppress people or whatever, and they he they don't really get oppressed, but the ones that try to have a little bit more of a sincere movement or breakaway type of movement, they they get they get hit pretty hard. Yeah, definitely. So, what is it that uh, we have to do here? I, I don't know. I mean, um, I can just like focus in and see see if Yeshua wants to talk to us again, or if there's some closure here, or something has to shift, um, or he needs to be free of this this creature, and we see if we can escort him back to where he belongs. I, I don't I don't know exactly. I mean, there might be. <laughs> I mean. Anytime you do something like this, it could be some peripheral fallout, you know, where you repercussions of some sort. Um, I have a good yeah. chiropractor now, so I'm <laughs> a little braver. <laughs> oh man, that's terrible. I'm sorry that happened to you, Jess. I didn't yeah. need my problems to spill over onto you. Well, I mean, maybe you weren't destined to be in that situation, you know. Um, and I, I, the last time we talked, you expressed your anger, and, and I, I could see the anger that you felt of um, yeah. you know, having pain like that all the time. And you're like, well, where does this come from, you know? Right. I mean, yeah, it's frustrating. Very frustrating. It's frustrating being in physical pain. It's, you know, frustrating being in emotional pain. And you feel like you're surrounded by that all the time. It's, it makes you bitter, angry. And it's not the state of being that I like to be in, but I find myself stuck there too often. I don't know, I was thinking about what he said. That, hold on, I actually wrote it down. That 1564, I hung from the gallows to prove that Jesus is Lord, but I survived, but I had an injury from it. And they called me St. Lucas. Said that I should forgive the people who condemned me and myself for my mistakes. Visualized the third eye from the quantum field and it was light and healing. Release my animosity. That sounds very hard to do. I feel like that's going to be a real challenge for me. But it's something that I want to do. Definitely. I think that um, you can present it in, in a sense saying that you want to release this, but the pain and the um, emotion related to the long 
the, the long suffering pain has created this, this issue where you can't fully release it. You ask for assistance to present it there that you don't want to carry it anymore. Not ask for assistance okay. to help release it. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, because you can't fully do it yourself because of the discomfort and the pain. And I, I know that when you're in the midst of a real challenge, like um, say you lost someone that you loved a lot, there's a point where you're like, you know, F everybody, I, I don't really care. I'm really angry. I can't, but why, why would they, why would God take this, you know, person that I love? from me at this point in my life or why, why am I suffering this pain so it's really hard it's really hard emotionally to get through something like that and so um, you know people go through different levels of sorrow or in your case anger because the pain creates um, it's an outlet of emotion for what what you're feeling and so it has to come out some way so it's not bad that you're angry it's it's hurtful to you to hold on to the anger which yes. then also can release the the pain at the same time and and the pain i always say pain is as a result of not just attacks but some residual pain on the, in the subconscious that doesn't know where else to go but is is held in the body and then it creates this this problem that's like disease and any kind of illness in my opinion yeah I was looking at some of the stuff that I wrote down and I feel like what I wrote down is probably not true from my perspective and I realize this is my perspective my perspective is probably wrong but from my perspective it's like all the want to manipulate and take advantage of us. Where are all these good ones? They're like, where are they? Why am I so... always feel like I'm being manipulated. Russia. Um, Yeah, I mean, we're, we're in different spaces and different places in time, and that's why, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time figuring a, a lot of these things out and getting insight about yeah. what to do, and so you know you have to your experience is a multi-dimensional experience with multiple lifetimes and so you have to identify the lifetimes where you actually had issues and when you find those it seems to lift in in the present time because it's almost related to you uh, and i know a lot of people don't like the the word karma but with our multiple experiences it does create like this quantum thread or quantum entanglement back into the past and um, so there is a purpose for karmas to help you understand something as soon as you see it it's not like guilt and punishment as people portray it it's more of oh I understand now so I had a conflict with this person we got in a battle they hit me with with the arrow I just I'm going to take that arrow out right now and I just want to release myself from that reality and I've seen people literally say, I don't have that pain anymore. But yeah. it has to, you have to know what you're looking for. That's the key. And and unless you fully understand why you're there, um, you might not be able to figure out. But sometimes people have their own epiphanies. So it's not like the universe has created these scenarios where people can kind of hone into something and say, Oh, I get that. No, I understand. You know, something that bothered me when I was a kid, and I get it. And then suddenly, it's like a burden lifts, and you feel lighter. Right. Conscious, your your awareness, your consciousness, is subconscious. Uh, your your mind, your thoughts, everything's entangled with emotions, feelings, um, wellness or or disease and um, entanglements with all different types of people that you've interacted with here now and in the past and even the entities even the entities or ETs that you might have had been entangled with but not every it's it's not like everything's one thing I mean I could sit down with a person 
and it could be all different things that are a result of the cause of a problem that they have. So it's not, you know, when you say all ETs, all the bad ones are doing it, it's it's more complex than that. It's not like a, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, black and white. It's the bad ETs and good ETs. It's, it's more than that. Right. And there's, there's beings that will behave badly and change. People grow and and I use the term people kind of broadly and things you know it's a changing situation which is frustrating too because um, I was just thinking about that uh, one quote very Tom when he was saying that if you can uh, chip away the barnacles on the uh, side that you'll find uh, silver underneath you can remember the old ways thinking yeah they have their issues too mm -hmm. but the old ways this that's that's why the indigenous people um understand how things operate as opposed to us we have to relearn it or, or you know people that spend time with indigenous people start to figure out and say oh now i understand how the earth works it's like they they survive through many different crises where you know our ancestor ancestry might have um, you know kind of been wiped in their memories or generations the same information that was necessary for them to you know exist here without a huge amount of problems. Yeah. There's a, a story about an Inuit guy and he uh, tells about how he found a couple, a young couple that just got married and approaches them and asks them if he can incarnate as their child. They understand that they're supposed to come back again they also understand that they can stay within their own race or species or, I mean, not species, but within their own race or tribe. And then they can even choose the parents that they want to come back to. So, I mean, that's an understanding and agreement that they have made. It's possible that we have the same ability to do that. But we think that we just, you know, die and that ends it. Or we think that we die and then we're stuck somewhere and it's like a nightmare. Or the other scenarios, we die and then there's a heaven and hell. Um, there's a lot of different variations, but whatever you do in this lifetime has an impact on, on how you transition and then how you come back. Yeah. It's weird, though, to me, like, because I've seen, well, I've heard testimony of people who have, like, seen themselves in hell, just wondering what they're looking at, you know? I mean, I imagine that, like, another psychic being would project any image they wanted to find, but it just makes me wonder, like, what these people are looking at. Um... There, there are, you know, it's almost like, I won't say it's just thought forms, but say, for example, like, uh, I, I used to, I went to this restaurant in this town that I lived in, uh, Newburyport, and there was uh, a place that, you know, <laughs> I think it's opened and closed multiple times, changed the name. And I remember going in there and I was like, wow, there was so much paranormal activity going on and finally we talked to somebody there that worked there and they said oh the basement's haunted I mean they'll go downstairs and a bear like would little like you know a bear that you drink would literally just like jump off of off of one of the shelves on its own wow. and it was you know it's in the basement and everything is brick so it's not like anything's moving or you know being affected by you know, earthquakes or anything. There's nothing like that. So this thing was literally, and they were freaked out. People would, that would be there late at night, 
you know, they're finishing their um, their evening uh, of work and they're the last one left and, and they, they would have these stories about how they see like apparitions and things down there and or paranormal things would happen. So they invited me to go down there. I went down there and I was communicating with this one guy and I told him, uh, the, the workers there, I said, I saw a guy with a top hat, you know, black top hat. So it's like 1800s or so. And he says, oh, I'll look into that. And I said, okay. And I said, but what he did was he opened up the Bible and he showed me and he said, I'm here because of this reason. And I said, well, what's that? And he showed me that him on a stagecoach with a, a beautiful woman. He says, that's my wife with me. And I said, okay. So you're on a stagecoach. And, and I said, what happened? He said, someone went to hold us up and I killed him. I shot him. He said, and I and I condemned myself. And then he opened up to like the Ten Commandments about, you know, like thou shalt not kill. And I said, um, so you're judging yourself for this. And he says, I can't go anywhere. And I said, well, you can if you ask for forgiveness or you want to release it. And I helped him to um, release and go leave the space. Um, about a week or so later, the guy that worked in the restaurant said to me, he said, I, I was really questioning what you said. He said, but I found an old picture. And there was um, like a picture from the 1800s. And you could see these people standing there, but there was a blurred image of a man going across the, the picture with a top hat. And he said, you think that's him? And I said, I'm sure positive it's him. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool, though. Actually, my dad just sold the farm, and he said a bunch of weird stuff has been happening since he sold the place. Like, he's, he was trapped during the closing, like, having all kind of crazy stuff happen. Like, wake up, the same picture would always be crooked. He'd hear, like, cracking in the walls. Flying was that your relatives? Right. Yeah, it's my dad's place. No, but yeah. was his family, did his family own the farm? No, uh, no. He bought it from them. From who? He bought it from a different family. Uh, someone oh, they were okay. related to. I didn't really know them. But I just thought it was interesting that all that stuff started happening as soon as like, he decided to sell the place. I they didn't know. want him to sell it. I think they're mad you're leaving. Yes, like, you're and he has, to, he has to make peace with them because that, that can bring it back into the house and find out why that they're upset that he left. Yeah, you guys had some problems after that, right? Yeah, he had a lot of problems. He had like three appliances break, the basement flooded, batteries and the ATV died and in the tractor at the same time. Like things that just shouldn't happen. Like like the washer broke, the microwave broke, the stove broke, battery in the ATV, battery in the tractor, the basement flooded. Just, like it was just boom, 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 boom like constant like unbelievable we've never ever ever had so many problems they can move through electromagnetic fields so they can affect that technology is it's almost like um that's what they use when they're testing whether or not the spirits around is they have that energy yeah you know they can t test their their electronic field Electricity, magnetism, and gravity. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, do you wanna... You wanna go see if Yeshua's available? See if, uh, what we need to do here? See if he needs <laughs> our help with anything? Yeah. Uh, we can find out what's going on with him. I'm nervous, but I'm very excited at the same time. Okay. I'm asking that our backs are protected. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just, I saw like um, a wind and then uh, I, I'm pretty sure I heard Gethsemane and then I saw a 
tree, like maybe it's an olive tree, and, and there was, the sun was like directly behind it, so it looked like it was glowing. It reminds me of um, this image that someone sent me where there was, I think they were in Nevada, and they saw this bright light, and they couldn't figure out what the light was. That's what it looks like. Um, I wonder if he's not going to show up. I heard uh, Freed, and it's like echoing. Maybe he just wanted us to connect to show us that he is out of that space now. It was a parallel reality to our timeline. That's where we went. So even though we had the years and everything, it's in another parallel. He's shifting, he's uh, doing something with multiple parallels, tying them together in some way. He said something about the Ouroboros is gone. So that's the snake eating itself. So the earth isn't, so our reality is not destroying itself anymore in that form, I guess. I'm sure we have other problems still, but He's uh, resolving that. Like Leonard Crumb. Yeah. Yeah, he just constantly wanting to burn everything. He gave you some kind of card. It it looks like it's about this like a square. Thank you. I will take that card. I don't see anything on it. Almost looks like it has a grommet on there. All sorts of pages are coming out. And then the pages are being lifted by a wind and they're, they're swirling. I'm hearing him yell out, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, he called me Thomas before. Oh. Called me Thomas because I doubted him. I'm sorry. So many conflicting remote viewing reports of him. It's insane. With you personally or just in general? No, just like of stuff that I've heard that just makes me confused. I've heard so many people give so many different testimonies. It's like I don't know what to believe anymore. It doesn't matter. I guess uh, whatever people want to hold on to you, if it gives them hope, or I, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to be adamant about something like this. It's not really, I think if anything, people are going to be angry thinking that I have some nerve talking to them, but, or that, you know, I'm not the one that they want to hear about it from, but I don't, I don't know, I mean. I, I definitely, I will say one thing, I'm not going to lie or fabricate anything I have, I have I've done enough work in, in my channeling that I don't feel like I need to prove myself at this point, but I know that people have a high regard for Yeshua, so, and I don't want to disrespect that either, so I'm not going to say anything that I feel would I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I would not say anything at all unless I know for sure that it's, I feel it's him. Right. I heard this, the term, uh, saying, I'm not sure who said that, it's tooth and nail. I think that's like a figure of speech or something. Let's see what that means. Like you're fighting tooth and nail. Yeah, but I want, I want an understanding of what they're referring to. Like, something's all out, full blast, full tilt. I'll fight tooth and nail to win the finals. That's an example of... So, they're going all out on something. They? Angels. You just saw one. Really? That's all? Awesome. Yeah. 
uh, the name, the name Ephraim. I think that's what he called himself. Ephraim. That's the name of uh, uh, Joseph's son, Ephraim and Manasseh. The son of Joseph, yep, Asenath, was an Egyptian woman whom Pharaoh gave to Joseph's wife. Ephraim was born in Egypt before the arrival of the children of Israel from Canaan. Yeah, that's a half tribe of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. He's an angel. We just saw him. He's wearing a kind of white robe. And he had like a. Um, not blonde, well, maybe it was dirty blonde hair. He looked familiar. I wonder if Joseph named his son after that angel. Or maybe the one and the same. The son incarnate, the angel incarnated as Joseph's son. Maybe. Because he was the head of one of the tribes, wasn't he? Yeah, well, Joseph is one of the 12 tribes, but no one ever talks about the tribe of Joseph. It's always Ephraim and Manasseh. I don't know why, but it's always split into the, his two sons. The firstborn sons were Ephraim and Manasseh, so they always refer to them as the half tribes of Joseph. Manasseh's there as well, but he was not an angel. He's got dark hair, dark curly hair, and he almost looks like he was a, um, a Roman. Not not a Roman, but has that, that kind of like, I don't know, a different type of outfit. Like the, the short robe type of thing. He's wearing sandals. They don't look like they're in conflict. It just, they seem to just have like different personalities, different energies. Do angels Maybe. use weapons when they fight? Yeah. Like sword shield kind of weapon or like a modern weapon? I mean, it might be per perceived as lasers or, or lightning or electrical uh, swords. Could They could appear as swords but not be solid. I was always just curious. Just like, what does an angel look like going into battle? <laughs> it look, it's pretty amazing to see them in battle. It's not. It's almost like their their um, their 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 energy is like lighter. You know what I mean? So, um, like we have a density to us. So when they move, it's, it's, I won't say it's graceful, but it's, you know, very agile and very, it can be very quick and they have abilities that are not, not typical. Okay. Does Ephraim know what I'm supposed to do with this uh, card, with all the pages? He said it was a gift to you. He said the pages opened up a new chapter uh, for your reality and he allowed you to be the one that opened it. Oh, wow. What's the new reality like? What's, uh, what's changing? It just said pleasant. He said, no more the darker sorrow. I think he's referring to that, that system that that entity brought in. The red guy. So he's gone out of this space then? I don't see him. I think I've been fighting him for about a couple of weeks now. And he would show up in different places. It's possible he may still, you know, show up somewhere. They both left us. 
They did, but they didn't. I think I think Yeshua was there. He's just not showing himself. And I'm going to ask Ephraim what's going on. His time is limited in what he can reveal. The first message is what he wanted everyone to know the, um, the last time we talked. The second is the manifestation and the release of some of the new reality onto the earth. And that's what we did just now. I just saw through one of the papers and the sky looks pale and then when that paper went in front of it it was more vibrant it's like he's adding how can i say it in in a photography or a film that. say it's digital right the there's a lack of sharpness that looks kind of like you know a lower quality has a certain amount of pixels on it this added like a whole bunch more pixels so it created this vibrant intense um color instead of a pale washed out color almost like we were depleted like uh, our energy field had been they were sucking the life from it and then he was infusing more life into it i gotcha okay well that is that's good glad to hear that yeah i think it's i think it's kind of an honor that you got to be the one to do it right that is pretty crazy i just wish i could uh appreciate the full effect of it I can see Maybe. that. Why don't you ask that? We'll, we'll ask Ephraim to maybe allow you to see it in some way, whether it's through a dream or a vision or something. Okay. Ephraim, can you help me out and help me to appreciate exactly what the that card does? So that I can have a better understanding of exactly what it is meant by turning the page, opening up this new reality. I just saw Yeshua. He's over by, um, I don't know if it's a river. And he's wearing a white robe and then had this uh, bright blue color. Like... Um, one piece of material just sort of draping over the side and he was uh had his hand in the water and there was like this sun reflection to it and he was drinking from it okay and the the thought was the living water the water was sparkling it was beautiful This was on Earth? No. Oh, okay. Uh, he said paradise. He was in paradise. But it can be on Earth. He said they can be one and the same. He said we don't need horrible things to happen in order to prove that there is benevolence he said people can respond to very simple things and he said that the counterfeits of him have told everyone that there has to be destruction in order for people to learn and he said that was never his teaching he said just accept love accept the connection of of what's inside of you 
are they, um, would they be able to help me release all of this anger that I had inside this rage from being hurt? He said, when you are freed from the tree, you won't suffer pain anymore. I'm not sure what tree, if he's talking about the tree that you got, they tr you know, they tried to torture you with because you were a Christian in the 1500s. Maybe it's just realizing something and it's going to open up. In our previous session, uh, he said that I was hung, well, he, he said that I was hung from a gallow. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he means by the tree. Possibly. Now I see um, his footprints. He's walking on sand and then he's walking on soil. I think he's showing me he's walking in the snow. It's almost like in like seconds that he's moving throughout large land mass or different seasons or something and then he's stepping in the water and then walking and underneath the ocean none of it affects him he's just moving and walking that's really neat that's cool <laughs> be able to walk into the ocean he said below the water is a coffin of many souls. I think he's talking about from the, the deluge. He said he it carried um, it captured or many souls were captured under the, the in the deep. And that's why, as advanced humanity is, they haven't really mastered what happens in the deep. But the souls still wander about, lost in the, in the depths of water. And they need to be returned back to where they belong. And when the time is right, they will. And the earth will begin to, will not grieve anymore in the pain of, of what had happened. That makes sense to me. I, I always thought that the ocean had so many mysteries and, and it was weird that people were interested in space, but they couldn't figure out what's in the water. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard all kind of crazy stuff about the ocean. I've heard that there's a portal, Mariana's Trench, stuff flying in and out of there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm sure there's all kind of things. But it's just like you having anger and that created an access point for that entity to come through, right? The anger can, can be a conduit. The same thing with a lot of dead souls can be a conduit for portals and from other um, things to come through. So people die very badly, you know, like people that were tortured in insane asylums or, you know, some of these places that are extremely haunted. And then it creates portals for bad ones. So... What uh, what actually caused that deluge? Um, the, the story is that Zeus and, and I think it was Calypso and her father, Calypso, you know, seduced Zeus and convinced him to wipe out the people that they were evil. But I think that would have been the other Zeus. It wasn't Andronicus. More like Hera impersonating Zeus. Someone that wanted to create trauma because, you know, we've talked about that Rev 1, that whole group of people that felt like they got killed and wiped out 
and yet, you know, in our present reality, there are people that are just as bad, if not a lot worse, than they were during Rebel 1. Or, you know, if we compare them to 1, we're 2. Other civilizations that exist. Okay. So, um... Yeah, Calypso, I guess, is, according to the story, was involved. Because I did ask Andronicus about it. I said, hey, I said, you were involved in this? And I said, and then you got hooked into Calypso, and, and he said, no, that wasn't me. Because he was only there for a short period of time, and then he left, and then all these other stories came up about Zeus that, you know, he had someone imitating him. Which I think I figured out it might have been Dionysus, but Dionysus goes is is Apollyon, and Apollyon is like one of the devils. I guess if you see it in Revelation, they talk about Apollyon, right. and it's not it's not Apollo. Here again is another counterfeit. He took Apollo's name, and he also calls himself Jupiter too. Sometimes we've caught him, and that's that's Leonard Crumb again. He went, you know, we found out he went by an alias of Leonard Crumb. Isn't that also Aten? No. Oh. No, Aten is Akhenaten, but it's Athena. Oh. Yeah, I knew that was Akhenaten, but... Okay, Athena. Yeah. If you if you look at the spelling, it's you can see Athena in the name. Okay. You looking at questions? Yeah, I had like a bunch that I was gonna ask him, but he doesn't. I don't know. He seems like he doesn't really feel real chatty today. Yeah, you, know, you 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 asked. He's answering you, or I'm <laughs> answering you. Some of these. Okay. Well, uh, all right. I wanted to ask about Canaan. Was what? Because you said some stuff about Cain. Like, who is he really? Who is Abel really? Is Cain even a human? I had a weird encounter with Cain. I saw myself in a civilization with him, and um, there was. Uh, an ET that showed up and manipulated him. I was like his, um, uh, I won't say sorceress, kind of like, yeah, a seer type of, maybe it was a sorceress, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I was pretty much like, an, I, I take that back, I didn't feel like I was doing any bad malicious magic or anything, but mostly giving them insight and protecting them. And uh, this, this entity showed up as a female seduced him she was very simple looking but for some reason he hooked right into her and followed her and, and she said about me that I need to go and so they they were there was like some kind of they got the whole group together and uh, he asked me to come in and I and he says well he says we're leaving and you're not coming we're leaving you behind and i said i need to tell you something something bad's going to happen we need to go underground and he said he didn't believe me and he left and i i ended up um bumping into these people that were another tribe and they brought me into this cave system and then i saw that that there was like an instant freeze like the whole whole planet froze or the region we were at just went into like a deep freeze and I saw him literally turn into like ice or something you know they all just like froze in their in their place kind of like they talk about the dinosaurs doing that and I, I had a vivid clear memory of this and I remember seeing him and I knew who he was because I kept on thinking his head looked dirty like he was bald and it's like kind of like grayish looking or black gray 
markings on his head. And when I started looking at it, I realized it was lightning, like a lightning bolt had hit him. And then I, re I said, oh, that's, that's probably Cain. Because the story goes is after he killed Abel. He got that mark, yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't just like a, a, a scratch or something like that. I mean, it literally looked like a lightning bolt on, on the head. But it was it was black. Like Harry Potter? Harry Potter just had like a little scar. Yeah. He had it all over his, his skull. Oh, like it was like, huge. So it, it, yeah, so if you would like hit someone with electricity and then it would respond like electricity, you know how, like like the branches of a tree. You know oh, how there's all crazy. those little tiny little, it went like that on his head and then maybe some of it on his face and I'm like, why doesn't he at least clean himself? You know, <laughs> what is that stuff on him? And then I realized that was permanent. That was that was his scar. He was extremely, what I remember, he was like extremely charismatic. Like the women adored him. Like they, they wanted to be with him. And the men saw him as some kind of hero. It was, it was really weird. Like not what you'd think. Okay. That's that's interesting. Uh was he was he human? They're they're advanced human. I don't know how to describe it, but when the earlier generations, say like the, the Genesis humans, you know, when they start talking the pre um pre deluge, right? Before the flood they had a much better DNA. They had abilities. They were strong. I see. And they were prepared to, um, you know, battle any type of wild creature on the planet. And they were very smart as well. So they were, they were a, a better version of what we have now. I gotcha. Even Maybe as smart as people think we are right now, they were, they were better. And even with um, the enhancements that people are doing, they were still better. That's my wow. opinion. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. That's very impressive. Okay. That's what he was. All right. What about oh, another person I wanted to ask you was um, Enoch. I've always, I don't know, really felt connected to him. I was wondering, like, who is he? What was he? What was his purpose? What did he, you know, come here to accomplish? I think he um, figured things out before the others did. And he's like, this, this, this is exactly how things are supposed to be. Um, but I think that he's also move through other people I think he can move through other people and I feel like I interacted with him that he used uh, he I had a client once that I felt I kept on hearing Enoch and we had this really interesting conversation and then out of nowhere um, the man bought me these cards these Enochian cards and um, some other things about scrying and it was really weird. It was almost like he was trying to help me to understand certain things. That's interesting. But I think Enoch can, I think he has the ability to come in and assist somebody if he wants to. And I think he'll give people a hint that it was him, but it's, if it's anything malicious or evil or manipulative, it's not him. It could be imitators. Right. Can you ask Yeshua, is there anything in the Bible that he wants to correct or that he feels he wishes would have been included in there? He would like to relay.
He said the, the book is there to confirm the information that's already written on your hearts. That's what he just said. So I guess it's to trigger and awaken certain things. Um, any information that isn't correct, I think he's implying that it doesn't matter, it doesn't go anywhere. They try to turn it into something or they try to alter something and it doesn't have any leverage. Is there I'm any asking about those other books that we talked about. That's what I was just going to say. Is there any writings that he really wants to recommend or point out? He said all of them know your history and cross-reference. Something about write them on the tables of your heart. The truth of what I told you. Okay. And uh, he, I saw, I don't know, know what this was, it was sort of like crisscross black something. But you know when they do like they redact something? So like in the, uh, you know, even with the UFO? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they have our political stuff and they just put like these block, black um, markings over it. It's almost like that's already on everything that relates to him that is inaccurate. So, for example, if there's a story and some of the information was added that isn't right, energetically it gets redacted. So even though you're reading it, there's something that doesn't quite feel right. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So you don't see it, but energetically it's there. But you feel it. Yeah. Okay. I've got, yeah, I know what you mean. I do. Because I, I've had that happen to me where I was reading a book and sometimes it's just words on a page and other times it like comes alive and I can feel it flowing through me. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've had that happen to me. Even for me, it's, it's translation. So if I read a certain translation, it's like, it, it feels like it's, you know, doesn't feel authentic or it feels like it's fabricated in some way, artificial. I don't know. Um, am I connected to Enoch in any way? No, but he's trying to communicate with you. Tried, which means failed. Um, You're not ready yet. Okay. Oh, your anger is holding back a lot of things because it creates a field which is not comfortable for certain ones to come in and communicate with you. Well, that's why I wanted help releasing it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Finding a resolve. Is there anything else that, I don't know, this is something I have to do on my own in quiet meditation, isn't it? I think it will just, it will, you'll get the help, I think you need help, and so you ask for help. Maybe you thought you had to do it all by yourself, and it's not necessarily the case. He, he closed a book, but I don't know what that means. Something ending, something new starting? It's a big book, it's like that thick. And it just got swept away. Kind of like it's drifting in the water. He said it's not necessary anymore. And then I saw it said uh, a book of judgment. He just said I'm tired of them torturing my children. I think he's pulling things out of our reality that he did that 
are supposed to be associated with him that he doesn't want. So, for example, someone puts something together that's copywritten, and there's people putting together articles all over the internet claiming to be the same as your company, but it's a, a different representation than you would ever do. And so you just take them, you know, legally, remind them they have to remove it. You know, we do it that way. He just sort of is pulling the information out as a book and then uh, putting it through this river, washing it away. I've never seen him do that before. I don't know. It's not about Washing away judgment sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, especially if it wasn't something that we were supposed to go through, but rather just negative entities posing as Jesus wanting to put us through a lot of nightmares and harms. Yeah. I mean, why is it always the humans that have to suffer? Maybe it's it's not, we're not supposed to be responsible for certain things. The negatives have always given us, uh, had us blamed for everything. And it's like, you know, the whole thing with the Adam and Eve and blaming Eve for everything and blaming Adam for some of it. And then never the snake. I mean, the, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah, well, the snake just doesn't, you know, he, he has to crawl around. He doesn't have legs anymore. But um, he's okay. He can go ahead and torture people for thousands of years afterwards. You know, I mean, it's. You know, the, the entities that kind of came in and created these scenarios and tricked people and, and set people up and everything. I mean, I think it's time for them to have to deal with what they've done. And I because agree. humanity has not had a fair shot at, at you know, ex showing their de decision making and their desire to evolve or to expand in consciousness. You know, they, they, there's so many distortions. They, they haven't had a fair chance. And I think that's the point that I've been, you know, this that's something that I stand up for. And I think that uh, uh, Yeshua just kind of confirmed it. So he's feeling like he's the right one to me, not not the, the, the fake ones. The fake ones are, are not very nice, to be honest with you. But you've run into the fake ones before. Oh yeah. Have trouble with them. Yeah. Well, everyone, humans are going to learn if we destroy your planet. You know, we destroy. Um, you know, we genocide or hurt all these people. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And it, it, to me, that, that stands out with what they're representing. Right. Okay. Do I? Um, did I have any type of contract of why I came to the planet? 4, 14, 8, and 6. Four vows. 14 letters. 8 novenas. 6 commitments. <laughs> Never heard that as an answer. Venus. Jesus, has anyone ever told you that you talk like a politician? Hard to get a straight answer out of you. He is giving you a straight answer. I don't understand it. He said you don't remember. That's true. That's correct. When you remember, it will make sense. He says, but you won't remember it unless he says a lot of humanity's memory has been wiped. No Novena means nine. It's an ancient tradition of devotional praying in Christianity, consisting of private or public prayers repeated for nine successive days or weeks. So you went through different lifetimes, and so it's maybe it's a combination of all these different lifetimes where you 
had certain prayers and agreements that you brought in. I guess. How can I work on getting these memories back? He said he has he has to change some things that will help people understand the normal how people recall the normal um, function of humanity as opposed to uh, reprogramming that's been going on for quite some time. So that, that has to be lifted a bit. He says this begins the course of succession. Oh, what's that? I don't know. The audio just cut out for a second. You see it in the audio, even the, in the video, everything just flashed. Hmm. I think a lot of this stuff is just, you're going to have to think about it, and, and part of the thinking about it, it may uh, trigger certain things. But right now, it's not a direct answer. And I think the part of the journey is not you know, just hand it all, all the, like, cheat notes or, you know what I mean, or here, here's all the answers to the test. It's not about that. It's about your understanding of what this, what has occurred here that has created the imbalance of our experience. And so with our own understanding and realization of what has become altered and why we don't have to stay in that space that alone could actually get us to create a momentum in the opposite direction realization actually is an epiphany that uh, has a very powerful manifestation quality I, yeah i understand that and that's true yeah okay I guess I just need to spend some time, just, I don't know, just try to work on, I guess, releasing all that anger. I guess just pray for help. Pray for help, I'm yeah. It looks it. like Ephraim might be there, maybe Manasseh will help you too. I don't know, they seem to be right there. Maybe you were part of their tribe. I found out that I am slightly Jewish. Hmm. Through your ancestry? Yeah. It's supposed to be like six and a quarter percent or something, or six and a half percent, something like that. Not much, but a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Possible. Um, is there anything that he wants to say about his uh, relationship with Andronicus during his time on Earth? He said we were friends in an, from another reality, from an ancient time. Even though we have different um, goals, they're not conflicting. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I had something like fly at my eyes when I said that, it was weird. You all right? It's probably the entity not happy with what we're talking about. I'm just lucky to make sure he's not going to attack us. Yep, he just threw a spear at us. He had like a nose ring. And he was bald. He threw a spear at us. Wow. I don't understand what we're doing to even aggravate him so much oh that's his purpose is to not allow humanity to evolve and he doesn't want anyone to help us because if, if they allow humanity if humanity evolves then they can't manipulate and use us loose off of us I mean seduce us you know all this other crazy stuff that these these entities live off of it's really simple
Okay. No, it remind me. Do you, do you remember seeing the video for um the the song that we use for Andronicus? Oh, that song we came from the future by way of the past. Yep. Okay. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, there's a video on this, like a cartoon. Yeah, I don't know. Was there? Do you hear any other lyrics? Yeah. Um, it says, bought my ticket from future by way ticket. of the past. Bought my yeah, ticket. song like the ticket, I think. Three. Oh, is that what it's called, the ticket? I think. So I bought my ticket to... The 16th century, right? You've been moving through a hole in history. That's about the time where you were the martyr. It's the 16th century. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's pretty weird, isn't it? Yeah. But we, we found that. We found that picture... Um, much later after we started doing the show, and I, I mean, that we found the, the song, and I was like, uh, how in the world? I said, this is really weird. So we used it as a theme song. And you don't really hear about the band. I don't know if they're still active or not. I have no idea. But uh, they sure had a lot of insight or someone, you know, directed them to do that. Right, yeah. Makes you wonder. Yeah. The synchronicities, I mean, they, they've been really prominent throughout all of this. Right. Um, With the spiders, finding out I was MDF. Oh, that's still a whole new can of worms that we have yet to really dig into that I'm curious yeah. about. You know, maybe we could save that for next time. I don't feel like I'm getting attacked, but I'll let you know if anything happens in the next day or okay. two. There were certain programs that, that have affected everybody, and they're not thinking the way that they should, and he's trying to help not teach every single person on the planet, but release or remove some of the stuff that doesn't belong here, like that book he got rid of today. That alone was worth a conversation with him. If he only did that one thing, I think I think I feel like this was a big success. So I guess the question is, what all is that going to change? I wonder. We'll see. Yeah, but no, I, I mean, I'm with you. I agree that the mind control needs to stop. It's out of control. It's that's what he's. I mean, yes, I've said that all along. No, but I, that's what he was saying too. Like it's in the. It's in the Shows and music, it's in the advertisements, on the billboards, newspapers, it's everywhere. Can't but it away. depends on who's in charge. And so if that creature was in charge, what's the world look like? Yeah. Not good. No. Do you know, was the cross he was crucified on, was it T-shaped or was it X-shaped? That's a good question for him. <laughs> I thought you saw it. I, I saw Gethsemane, but I, I did not see that the cross there. I saw that tree. It was an olive tree. Okay. I was just asking. I heard someone. They had a personal testimony of a near-death experience where they said they met him and he told them it was an X-shaped cross that was close to the ground. And I was like, really? Just wondering, that's all. It could uh, have been he talked to the fake one or the real one, or he could have talked... Yeah. Or he could have experienced being in another timeline or uh, parallel. Yeah, that could be too. Yeah, we can... I mean... I don't know what. Why is some of this stuff important? Of how he is, or the the idea of whether or not he died and, and rose again, or that you know whether he never died. Why is it important? Because 
people are basing their entire eternity on the words of this book. Yeah. And if they're, if it's not accurate, then they should know. Is it the book that they're basing their belief in, or is it God that they're basing their belief in? I think it's God through the lens of the book. But the lens of the book has been altered by humanity, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a God. Right. So we can't get hung up over um, what humans have done, what other entities have done, and whether they were good or bad, you know. Even good ones were trying to just clarify because it was hard for many people to understand, but... I, th I think there is a higher level of the book than the belief of the being. And when you see that, and this is where people get upset. If I say that Jesus is an extraterrestrial or he is a being with supernatural abilities that we're not accustomed to, or even more similar to like the Genesis group of humanity where the genetics were not altered, that they were purer then he had abilities to not die very easily or be more immortal. So if he went through variations of this crucifixion, say in multiple um, parallels, maybe in one parallel it was an X, maybe another one it was a cross, maybe another one it was literally a tree. You know? Yeah. Which could bring in but then there's also the counterfeits that he talked about could have played out some of these roles as well so it's it's really it's about it's in your heart um your your soul connection to something right right and not not just um i know people want to go down and say this is the detail and this is the exact picture of it but even if you take a video camera and you want to archive your life you're showing this much of the view of what's happening the entire time and doesn't fully give you the full spectrum of everything else that's going on around it and that's uh, like Genesis, you know, everyone says, well, you know, why were there already people here when Adam and Eve had kids and there was already people, where did they come from? You know, that it's, that's, that's the broader spectrum of everything that's going on. You get yeah. pieces of information. Pieces of information is supposed to direct your path, your soul, and give you recall of, of what your connection to that is. And that goes for any inspirational writing or, or um, any any journey, personal journey of the soul. You're not going to get all of a sudden a download like a robot of every single thing that ever happened in the Akasha of, of all humanity from the beginning to the end and then you'll see God. It's not going to work. It's, it's redundant. It doesn't have a purpose and it's distracting. You're the only thing that you need to be concerned about, and this is another thing, is that human, humans are always comparing themselves to other humans, whereas uh, the human journey, the human experience is, is very unique for each and every person. That means there's variations of experiences that lead people to maybe a, a similar end result, but their path could be completely, entirely different. So that's why there's no playbook for any of this. It's not supposed to be. And the more you write about it and tell people they have to do this, this, and this, that's when we start getting in trouble. And that's where the religions came in and started to impede it rather than open up people's heart, which was, it was so simple a child could understand it, but then we made it too complex and started doing all these other things. And then, you know, if you wear these clothing, it makes you more godly. If you if you um, have these practices, that makes you more godly. And the, you know, the self-righteousness actually is defeating the actual um, the God energy, the God uh, openness, and opening up the heart to God. So, I mean, like I said, this don't get hung up on the book. The book—it's not just the book, literal book. It's the message. 
And the message is, is should coincide with the heart. So anything else, you have to learn to release. But if you're very analytical, it, it's, it's bothersome. Uh, it's, no, I know, I understand. All right, I was reading his Sermon on the Mount today, and that really, came, that part, that particular part really came alive. Just that one part, it was really felt it. And then, like, I was excited. I thought the whole book was going to come alive. And as I kept reading, it was, like, dying off. I was like, no, come back. It's, some and of it's, 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 you know, it's like uh, there's there's a book called Josephus, which is a, a historian. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've read it. Some of it's, it's, it's encyclopedia. It's history. It's, it's a history book. You know, and from one perspective, remember, there's, like, you know, everyone has their own perspective. And another person... Could have been standing at another point when these things are happening or you know or have a different um alliance and then see it completely different but yet you know the one who wrote the book is the perspective we all see right right sure you have been listening to androna talks radio Join us on YouTube channel Jessica Errol Morocco and visit her website at www.readingsbyarial.com.